the three biggest favorites in week nine, the Chiefs, the Steelers, and the Patriots, all won, barely. We'll talk about it and get you ready for week 10 in NFL Survivor Pulls, as well have a debate for the NFL player you'd start your franchise with for one season. All coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley. And we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, last week shows why the NFL is my favorite sport. <laughs> wow. So, wow. Some nail biters, some really stressed out individuals, some stressed out coaches. I mean, really some, some potential uh, season changers or at least week changers. Yeah, it shows how no game is a gimme. I mean, <laughs> even those tricky, horrible Jets uh, had, a, had a chance to, to, to win this week. And a field goal. A, the Panthers just, just almost pulled off a miracle win against who we thought was the best team in the NFL. Yeah, no, no had a chance. Jet, the Jets were dominating that game. And somehow, you know, actually behind a nice showing, uh, from New, uh, Newton, it, it was it was a pretty uh, impressive little comeback. So yeah, I mean, all three of the games that we were watching really closely uh, were really it looked like the the losing team was going to win. Yeah, and the, how about Dallas dominating uh, the Steelers with a third string QB with Zeke Elliott uh, uh, hobbled and against. It, an undefeated Steeler team. Wow. It's just shocking. It shows you, uh, we, we, we tell us about our poll. Yeah. Well, not surprisingly that basically the whole poll picked those three teams, um, with, with the Steelers getting the most picks, uh, and then right after them was the Patriots. And so, um, and only the chiefs didn't get many just because a lot of people picked them in prior weeks. So all 29 of our contestants are still alive. Some other, some, some, uh, some really good picks, uh, from the teams that, from the folks that picked other teams, but really almost everyone picked those three teams. Wow. For the first time all season, we can say that this is incorrect. Dead people. No dead people this week. That's all right. right, Michael, let's see if we can get them through week 10. We got three, three spreads that are under a touchdown. Detroit, four-point favorites at home against Washington. Your Raiders, five-and-a-half-point favorites over Denver. They're at home. And Tampa Bay Bucks, uh, six-point favorites at Carolina. Baltimore is a touchdown favorite at New England. Pittsburgh, seven-and-a-half-point favorites at home against Cincinnati. All the remaining teams are at home. New Orleans, nine over San Francisco. And the Green Bay Packers, 14, two touchdown favorites over those Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's start with the Detroit Lions, four over Washington. Look, folks, this is the last call if you want to pick the Detroit Lions. This is the best game they have left. But for me, it's a no call. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine going all season without picking these Detroit Lions. I have no confidence that they're going to beat uh, Washington at home. You go, yeah, but they're at home. You, you talk about the Dorothy rule. There's no place like home. Well, I don't know so true with the Lions. They're 0-3 at home. I think the fact that the Redskins are on their third string QB, I think they're on their best QB in Alex Smith. Uh, I think he gives them the best chance to win. I actually think this could very likely be an upset. I want to know whether Kenny Galladay is back. They really miss Galladay in that uh, lineup for Detroit. Uh, I'm passing on this particular game. So this, there's no reason to touch this game. Yeah. Okay. Washington lost to the giants when everybody thought for sure they should take care of business with the giants. But, uh, I agree with you. I think Alex Smith has a chance to really show things And Detroit. I mean, who, who's Detroit this year, right? There's no reason to have any confidence in Detroit. I'm surprised the spreads this high. Yeah. Um, let's go to the, your Raiders. Can you endorse someone who says, you know what? I want to go to the Raiders this week, knowing that they believe that they're going to beat Denver. Good idea or bad idea? Well, you know, not a lot of reasons to save uh, the Raiders for future weeks. Um, I think they have the Jets in a few weeks. So, so perhaps then, but there might be some other good games then. 
Um, I really like the, the, the Raiders this week. I think they should take care of business uh, without too much stress, uh, although they don't really blow teams out. And so that's one of my concerns. Um, obviously, this is also a big rivalry game, which, you know, I don't put too much stock in that with where teams are at right now. Um, but uh, because there's other games uh, on the board, I, I'm going to I'm going to pass on picking my Raiders uh, against the Broncos. It's nice to see them on the board though, right? So you get to talk about them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they they have shown that they are, uh, they're a playoff contender and Denver's clearly not. Uh, playoffs? Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Uh, that wasn't me, that was Moore. He doesn't believe yeah. it. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> Michael commented on it. It's week 13. They play at the New York Jets. That's the only game uh, I think that you would consider in the future for the for uh, Las Vegas, but you might uh, might want to save them there. How about the? You know, I'm going to give you a little bit of flack for that Ra- that playoffs comment. I mean, I think the Raiders are really proving, and we've seen them, you know, in their game against Kansas City. I think they've proven that they are to be contended with. I, I would not want to play the Raiders any week if I was uh, in the playoffs, if I was another team. And so, uh, yeah, the Raiders aren't going to go out and dominate anyone, but I think they can play with anyone. And so uh, I'm very confident in this game. And if you don't have any of these other teams left, left, I think this is a pretty safe pick. Yeah, just ask the Chiefs, right? Uh, who are the favorites in the NFC? You've knocked them off. Uh, Tampa Bay Bucks. not to be mean, Michael, but I believe you you were your Super Bowl pick, uh, considering the odds, because you liked the odds. You didn't think they were going to win the Super Bowl, but considering the odds, you said Tampa Bay. And ever since that, what the heck has happened? Uh, they are six point favorites, though, Eric, at Carolina. Do you think they'll be able to turn it around this week? Yeah, what a disaster against the Saints this week. I think uh, part of that is they got their their egg out of the way. But, you know, obviously that was a big game for them to, to lose to the Saints. Now they've lost twice to the Saints. So even if they come even to, with them at the end of the season, they're not going to win that division. So that was a big blow and a big embarrassment. Um, at home. Looked really bad. Yeah. So let me ask you this question, though, in support of the Bucks. Is there a better trio of wide receivers in the NFL, in the, any team has, than Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Antonio Brown? Uh, no. Well, you're giving Antonio Brown credit from where he was a couple of years ago. We'll see. He, he actually cost one of the interceptions because he was out of position last night. So, you know, he's, he's rusty. Um, or the other night, he's pretty rusty. But uh, that being said, um, yeah, I mean, talk about athletes. So Tom Brady has athletes, and then you add Leonard Fournette to that, um, and, and some Hitters, guy I mean, they are—they're an athletic team, right? And some guy named Rob Gronkowski. You know, I, I think you got to give more respect to Carolina with what yep. Rule um, and their offensive coordinator from LSU last year has has been able to do with um, really a pretty mediocre defense. Uh, their offense has been strong. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit afraid of betting against Carolina. I mean, they really had that game in hand or, or they were able to, they should have won that game against Kansas City in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, and, Tamp- and Tampa Bay looked so bad against the Saints, but that's the very reason I think that Tampa Bay is going to come out and, and take care of business. I think they're, they're not going to fool around. They're not going to do anything too cute. Um, and Carolina is susceptible against the run. I think you're going to see a heavy dose of the run, uh, and then Tom Brady be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of play action, which he really wasn't able to do against the Saints. I think you're really right, Michael. I think you do. This is, I said it before, I'll say it again. This is not a bad Carolina team. This is not a team you want to pick on in the, uh, for, for NFL survivor pool. Uh, not only did they almost beat the Chiefs, uh, they beat the Raiders, and they, uh, they beat the Arizona Cardinals. So um, if they have Christian McCaffrey, you stay way away from this game if he, he plays. Uh, but even if he doesn't, Mike Davis has played well in his, uh, his stead. Let's talk about Baltimore. Touchdown favorites over, I don't know if you can call them New England Patriots anymore. I mean, the, uh, the, this is a shadow of their uh, former self. 
I think Baltimore is going to really beat them up. However, my reason for not picking them is to save their future value. They already have their home to Dallas, Jacksonville, and the New York Giants. Just wait. Just wait. That's simple. Yeah, that's exactly right. You've, you've waited this long to play Baltimore. Take advantage of the fact that when there's some other weeks where you don't have as many good options, save them. But I agree with you. I think New England is a very mediocre team. They've had so many injuries, you know, going with, you know, Cam Newton is just a little bit scary, even though he was pretty accurate last night against the Jets. But the fact that that game was as close as it was, I think is just further evidence that New England is, is uh, not what they used to be. How about the next game? Pittsburgh, seven and a half point favorites at home against Cincinnati. I see you shake your head. Tell me your thoughts. Well, I, I think almost all of our views of, viewers have already taken Pittsburgh because of some of the more, more recent matchups. But I'm, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, really embarrassed for them for what happened in Dallas this last week. Uh, they should have lost that game against a third string quarterback. Um, and, you know, part of it was, you know, Roethlisberger was a little bit hobbled, but he actually may be out this week. We won't know till Saturday whether or not he's going to play. And I don't feel really good about Mason Rudolph as the backup. Um, you know, they just haven't been able to kind of figure themselves out on the offensive side. And, you know, Cincinnati's coming off a bye. I, I really, I really like what Cincinnati has, has really done for coming out of a super down, down year with Joe Burrow uh, at the helm. And it's, you know, a bit of a rivalry. So, you know, I think Pittsburgh should win this game, but most people don't have them left anyway. So why are we talking about it? Well, I'll just say that Joe Mixon's coming, likely to come back, which I think really helps uh, that Bengal offense. And if you somehow still have Pittsburgh uh, and you were this patient to use them, don't blow them this week. <laughs> they still have Jacksonville and Washington on their, their schedule. So we'll leave it at that. So, we're down to two more games, and we haven't revealed our pick. So gather all your kids around the TV. This is an historical moment. You do not want to miss this. Eric. I am picking the New Orleans Saints. Wow. A New Orleans Saints team that is at home. A New Orleans Saints team that is more than a, a nine-point favorite or more. Sound familiar? Yes, the last two seasons, I have picked the Saints, who've been a nine point or more favorite, and each time they've blown it. And it, and it was when you were eliminated at the same time, right? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So, I, so, what you're saying is for all our viewers, this is a time to not pick the Saints. Yeah, this is a time that you might want to go, might want to put me on mute, right? Just to, I'll, I'll wave my hand when I'm done so you can unmute. Uh, but look, I'm breaking the curse this, 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 this year, Michael. I am certain of it. This San Francisco 49ers, it's a misnomer. I'm not, until they get healthy, healthier than the San Francisco 39ers. They are going to play without their top QB, without potentially their top three running backs, for sure the two of the top three, but probably the all three, their top wide receiver, their top tight end, two key members on the defensive line, yeah, which is probably the best player on their team right there, you know, on the defensive end. So, yeah, this, this uh, and meanwhile, you got the Saints who finally are putting it all together. They put the hammer down on the Bucks, 38 to three. Michael Thomas is back and he's so important. If you guys say, look, Michael Thomas didn't do much last game. Oh, yes, he did. He got a lot of attention by the defense. So that opened it up for other people. So. Regardless, and their defense looked so good against Tampa Bay. And so I think New Orleans right now all of a sudden looks like they might be the best team in the NFL. Yeah. So I feel very confident. I am going to pick the Saints this week over the San Francisco 39ers. Well, if I had them left, I would probably pick them as well because I think uh, Green Bay has a couple of good games left. But uh, I think I can pick uh, Green Bay safely this week because one of the weeks where Green Bay has a great game left, uh, I think I have another option. So I am going to go with Green Bay. I'm going soft, taking the big spread there. Uh, I think Jacksonville, even though I think their backup quarterback showed some promise this week, 
um, I think Green Bay should be able to take care of business and maybe not cover that 14 point spread, but at least get close to it. So I think this is the safest pick and I'm going with Green Bay. All right, allow me to vent. I'm gonna do this every week until it stops. The Jacksonville Jaguars are one and seven. They've lost seven in a row since the first week when they beat the Colts and eliminated me. <laughs> um, this defense is awful. They can celebrate for the first time this season. They didn't allow 30 or more points in a game. Uh, they allowed 27 to, to Houston. So, uh, wow, Aaron Jones is healthy. Devontae Adams is healthy. This Green Bay team is just going to walk all over uh, Jacksonville. So I just said, I think Green Bay and New Orleans are really safe picks, you know, as much as you can be safe in the NFL after last week. So how do you decide if you're going to go with Green Bay or go with New Orleans? If you have both teams, it's all about future value. I know we don't like looking too far ahead, but week 12 is not too far ahead. It's going to be probably the toughest week of the NFL season. And probably the best game on the board is this Green Bay Packers at home against Chicago. There's up a couple other good games. If you have the Dolphins and if you have the, the, the Saints, I don't think they're as good, but they're decent. Uh, I'm picking the Saints this week and I already picked the Dolphins. So I have to save uh, Green Bay. So I am going with the Saints this week. Yeah, and I, and I have the Dolphins available to me. Um, unfortunately, I picked the Patriots the week that I could have picked the Dolphins. Um, and uh, that, that would, uh, and I'll go with the, the Dolphins that week, barring injuries and, and things like that. But I, I think the other thing to notice about this Green Bay game is it will be at Green Bay. It's going to be cold. Um, and uh, even though Green Bay did lose one of their key defensive backs, I'm not sure if he's going to be back, Jair, but um it i think this is a pretty solid pick so. so michael i'm feeling awfully lonely in the experts pool i am the lone saints pick you're going with the packers las vegas is going with the packers they haven't picked the packers yet this this uh year and the crowd is flocking so far early returns i feel like i'm talking about the election early returns in the week looks like the packers are the most popular pick. All right, Michael, we always like to add one extra little thing in the show to kind of talk about. And I think this is an interesting topic. Let's suppose you're going to begin an NFL franchise today for one season that starts today. So we're cutting the old season off right now. And we're going to start a new 16 game season playoffs and all that. What NFL player would you want to start your franchise with a one year contract you know there's a lot of great running backs out there there are a lot of difference making wide receivers but the position in my opinion that has the biggest effect is quarterback it's hard not to start with a quarterback what are your thoughts coach yeah no question right and part of that's just because of how much uh you know the the quarterback inability to play just changes the game right and so uh, you need somebody who can handle pressure, who can handle different types of defenses and how they come at you, who can handle injuries around them. Um, and, you know, that's where, you know, you just don't get the individual performance um, uh, of, of one of these other positions to have such an impact. Right. And so no question in my mind, it's got to be the quarterback. Um, From a defense perspective, it's, it's kind of hard to say, I'm going to shut down the quarterback. <clears throat> as opposed to say, hey, I'm going to shut down this wide receiver or I'm going to shut down the running game by committing the tons to the, the bodies. And so for me, um, I can think of some of the ones that, that you'll be thinking about, but I think it's pretty clear, at least based on where folks are today. Tom Brady's already passed his prime. A couple of these up and comers still have a few more years to get there. Uh, although one of the up and comers, I think, is already really there. And to me, that's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and so I think I feel really strongly that Patrick Mahomes, um, you know, having been already the MVP, the, the Super Bowl MVP, um, you know, with what he did in college, you know, all he's ever really done is surprise people and win and show that his ability to avoid injury because of how, uh, how he plays the game, his ability to make real-time decisions, uh, whether it be with the blitz 
or the zone. Interestingly enough, he's actually better uh, against the blitz than any quarterback uh, from a statistics perspective. Um, and so, you know, even though I think there's a couple other quarterbacks who are a little bit more mature and in their prime than he is, um, I think uh, he's my guy. Yeah, and I think most people would agree with you. I'm not. Um, and before everyone says, okay, my guy is Russell Wilson. And before you guys say I'm a homer, I have not picked the Seattle Seahawks in Survivor yet. I did not pick the Seattle Seahawks to win uh, in the, when we talked about the odds to win uh, the, the, the Super Bowl. First of all, before I say this, Patrick Mahomes is incredible. He's outstanding. I'm not at the least saying he's bad. In addition to the fact that he's thrown 25 TDs and one interception absolutely in sensational he's an incredible quarterback but what are the stats you care about from a quarterback how about uh completion percentage how about total passing yards on a per game basis all these are on a per game basis because uh mahomes has played one more game than um russell wilson uh tds thrown quarterback rating rushing yards russell wilson sweeps them all this year more than Patrick Mahomes. Now, granted, is it close? Of course it's close because Patrick Mahomes has had a great year in addition to Russell Wilson. Here's my question for you. In You've seen the TV show Wife Swap. With a, what if we did a QB swap? What if we put Russell Wilson on the Kansas City Chiefs and put Mahomes on the Seattle Seahawks? How do you think that would affect their stats, Michael? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think everybody would agree that Kansas City has some of the best weapons uh, around Patrick Mahomes. I think the reason why I would choose Mahomes over um, uh, Russell Wilson is they they both have the ability, Russell Wilson perhaps better than Mahomes, to um, you know make things happen. Uh, you know, like we've seen with Rodgers and even Roethlisberger over the years, when sometimes things don't go according to plan. And, and I think Russell Wilson perhaps does that better than anyone. I think where Mahomes has proven himself in ways that I haven't seen a quarterback in a while um, is how he, how he handles um, uh, the, he, he's, he, he always is according to the script, um, except for those few moments where he has to do something. And I think he has shown that he can handle a playbook better than any quarterback. And that's really, you know, we saw that back in the years with Donovan McNabb, where he had Andy Reid, who's probably the best offensive mind who's ever come through uh, NFL football. And he struggled with it at, at moments, even though McNabb was such an athlete. And I'm not sure Russell Wilson is as good at that. And to me, you have to be able to do that. Here comes the coach out in me again, right? And so, um, you know, plays are scripted for a reason a certain way. And being able to execute them according to plan I think makes for an easier game. And so, yeah, Russell Wilson has shown how to come out in those tough moments, but maybe you don't have those tough, tough, those, those tough moments if you're continuing to execute the plays as they are designed. And Patrick Mahomes does that to a wonderful team. Okay, you should run for office, Michael, because you pretended that you would address the question I asked to you and then you pivoted to what you wanted to talk about. <laughs> what I said was, if there's a QB swap, what would it, what, what would it, what would it be like? I'll tell you what it would be like since you don't want to name it. You did admit that he had future better weapons. Russell Wilson has never had a, a tight end like Travis Kelsey. He's never, in my opinion, in his era, had a wide receiver with the talent of Tyreek uh, Hill. But more important than that, he's never had the offensive line that, um, that um, Mahomes enjoys. He is a time to sit into the pocket where Russell Wilson is always running for his life. Do you know this year, even though Russell Wilson has played one less game, 24 to 11, 24 sacks uh, that Russell Wilson has been sacked 24 times, Mahomes 11. And don't tell me that's because Wilson doesn't know how to avoid. He's running around avoiding. He should he'd be sacked a lot more. So I really think that's a factor that a lot of people aren't uh, focused on. Do you feel like it has merit or do you, uh, you don't buy it? No, again, I think no one is. No one has shown the ability to avoid a tough situation like like Russell Wilson. It's a little bit disappointing. I'm sorry for you that we didn't have to have this conversation on right after Russell Wilson's worst game of the season. But uh, <laughs> that being said, 
uh, I, I'm very impressed with what he's been able to do, including as a, a shorter quarterback, right? Which is really, really huge. I like that you can throw for 390 yards and make that be your worst game of the season. My closing argument is Russell Wilson has a much longer career, right? He's been playing since 2012, eight full seasons and this extra half. Two key facts. He's an Iron Man and he's a winner. He's an Iron Man. He hasn't missed a single game in all those years. Played every game, which is incredible given his horrible offensive line throughout the years. And he's a winner. The Seattle Seahawks, despite not having a lot of stars in his in his uh, tenure, has never had a losing season, Michael. And the reason for that, the number one reason for that, is Russell Wilson. I, it's a it's a real tough one. I just think Mahomes is a little more prototypical and still executing plays. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm taking advantage of where they're both at in terms of uh, the, the 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 weapons and and stats that they've been producing based on those weapons. I think most people would agree with you, Michael, but I hope I've opened people's eyes to at least consider how good uh, Russell Wilson. Well, he's, he's almost a shoe in for the MVP this year. Obviously we're only partway through the season, but I, I think, um, I think you, you're going to look pretty good at the end of the season when the MVP comes out. Yeah. Well, both guys are just incredible talents. You take them off their teams and I don't know if they make the playoffs. It, the Seahawks definitely wouldn't, and the Chiefs might not uh, either, assuming they get an average backup back there. So um, I just want to personally thank all of our viewers for the fact that uh, they have sticked with us through the whole season. I know that a lot of you guys are out of our pool, are you're maybe out of your respective pool, but you continue to watch. We want to reward you for that loyalty. We want to get through this pool first. But at the end of the year or the playoffs, we are going to do the same thing we did last year, some type of subscriber appreciation where we have a contest for you to real, win real money and you get another shot at it. So hang in there with us. We're going to do something uh, toward the end of the season. Um, uh, so, and Michael, you have a message for them to continue to Yeah, stay please here. make sure you uh, you comment, um, you know, go in there and tell us who you're picking and why, and go ahead and uh, feel free to pick on us for our, our franchise player picks and make your picks and tell us why. We'd love to hear from you. And please, if you haven't yet, please hit that red subscriber button. And more importantly, take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks.